I have a statement that is a little longer than the normal, but let me just say that I have just met with the congressional leadership to request their bipartisan backing for a new, comprehensive, and integrated program to support the struggle of freedom underway in Russia, Ukraine, and the other new states that have replaced the Soviet Union. The revolution in these states is a defining moment in history with profound consequences for America's own national interest. The stakes are as high for us now as any that we have faced in this century. And our adversary for 45 years, the one nation that posed a worldwide threat to freedom and peace, is now seeking to join the community of democratic nations. A victory for democracy and freedom in the former USSR creates the possibility of a new world of peace for our children and grandchildren. But if this democratic revolution is defeated, it could plunge us into a world more dangerous in some respects than the dark years of the Cold War. America must meet this challenge, joining with those who stood beside us in the battle against imperial communism, Germany, the United Kingdom, Japan, France, Canada, Italy, and other allies. But together, we won the Cold War, and today we must win the peace. This effort will require new resources from the industrial democracies, but nothing like the price we would pay if democracy and reform failed in Russia, in Ukraine, in Belarus, in Armenia, and the states of Central Asia. It will require the commitment of a united America strengthened by a consensus that transcends even the heated partisanship of a presidential election campaign. And today I call upon Congress, Republicans and Democrats alike, and the American people to stand behind this united effort. Our national effort must be part of a global effort. I've been in contact with Chancellor Cole and Prime Minister Major, President Mitterrand, and other key allies to discuss our plans and to assure them of the high priority I place on the success of this endeavor. To this end, I would like to announce today a plan to support democracy in the states of the former Soviet Union. This is a complex set of issues which took months to sort out, working within the administration, working with our major allies, and with the leaders of the new independent states of the former Soviet Union. A number of things had to come together to make sure we got it right. Let me give you a little bit of the history. I asked Secretary Baker to outline our <coughs> fundamental approach in, that, uh, in his December 12th speech at Princeton. I spoke again on the need to embrace Russia and the other new states of the former Soviet Union in my January 22nd speech at the Washington Conference to coordinate the humanitarian assistance. 